Hi guys, welcome to the video. This is my solo flawless run of the duality dungeon. Now I am doing it on Hunter Solo 3.0. Here are the, all the abilities that I'll be using. I'm using Blade Barrage because Blade Barrage is pretty strong with Void uh, Solo 3.0. Uh, Gambler's Dodge, which will help me get my knife trick back. Basically, it's the three knife throw, uh, and that what that really buys into really really synergizes well with the mods that we're going to be using. Triple jump infusion need on your mark simply because I didn't want to use uh, gunpowder gamble. It is actually pretty good if you get a precision final blow. Uh, you really it's really good for helping you get your reload, but not so great at boss fights. But everywhere else, it's pretty good. Uh, knock them down. This is actually pretty good. Obviously, you get blade barrage. Uh, more projectiles, but as you can see at the bottom, while you're radiant, final blows with your th th throwing knife give you your throwing knife back. So that's really gonna play in because if we get, if we get a final blow, or we get hit with the 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 knives, as you'll see with the fragments, we'll become radiant anyway. So we've got uh, class ability recharges faster when you scorch um, targets. Ember of singeing. Our, our knife trick scorches targets. So every time you get a kill with thrown knives, you get about 60% of your class ability back. Uh, Ember of Ashes, apply more scorch to targets. Now, solar we weapon or ability final blows extend the duration. I'm pretty sure everybody knows about this one. It does take some resilience off you, which is it's fine. Thrown knives will extend it once you... Use your dodge because when we go to the module, see that's what I'm using. When you dodge and then get a thorn knife kill, you'll become radiant. You'll already have restoration from the dodge. This will just give you a bit more of it. Now, what I've noticed is there's a bit of a cooldown on it. It's not much, but uh, it's definitely a really good way to go. Ember of Solace, more radiant and restoration time. And uh, this is the Ember of Torches, the one that I was saying. Powered melee attacks against combatants make you and nearby allies radiant. Now notice it says powered melee attacks, not final blows. Using your knife trick will make you 25% more powerful. So weapons, we're using Nightwatch. Now the reason I went with Nightwatch is because it, it's a lightweight frame. So it gives me plus 10 mobility. You can see to the right there I've got 80 mobility. I don't feel like I need 100 mobility. 80 is fine. Uh, we're going to start with Nezarex Whisper. Really good. I've got Impulse, Impulse Amplifier and Vorpal Weapon on mine. The, the type of glaive you use is not important. I use this. Extrovert is really good for the first encounter. Final blows near multiple combatants or near nightmares restore health. So that makes it really good. Uh, then I'll be changing to the Forbearance. If you haven't done the raid, you don't have this, fine. You don't need to have a specific waveframe grenade launcher. Just a waveframe will do. I would, I definitely enjoy the Ambitious Assassin. Getting a final blow gives you two in the mag. And then at the boss, I'll be switching to the Glacial Chasm. Now, the reason I've went with this, and again, you can go with other ones, is the impact. I want to kill the, the Bell Keepers in one hit. And subsistence reservoir burst just helps do that. Gonna be starting with the lament. Uh, really good. I'm sure everybody's got that. And then I'll be switching to storm chaser. Now this has the linear fusion rifle from the the dungeon. You do not have to use this. You can use any linear fusion rifle. Uh, but a linear fusion rifle at the boss is is recommended. Classy restoration. Now solo three point is really good. Classy Restoration makes Solar 3.0 a ton better. So basically, when you dodge, you will get Restoration. What more can you say about that? <laughs> it speaks for itself. Melee Wellmaker, getting a melee kill, uh, spawns an Elemental Will, which matches your subclass type. So because our subclass is Solar, we will be getting Solar Elemental Will, so we're going to buy into that whole thing with Will of Life. Basically, more healing when you get a grenade, when you get a, a thrown knife kill, you're going to drop an elemental well, pick that up. You're going to get, I think it's 10, 8 seconds, 10 seconds of constant healing. And then obviously sword scavenger because we're starting with the lament. As we go on, I will switch my finders. Uh, I won't switch. I'll, I'll only switch at the boss, the finders, really. 
and I'll switch to Linear Fusion Rifle Finder. Sixth Coyote, get the double dodge. Now, I am running uh, uh, Armor of the Dying Starts, the, 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 the damage reduction mod from the, the artifact. I'm only running one because there's quite a bit of arc up to the boss, and then at the boss, I'm going to switch to Sniper Damage Resist. Uh, powerful Friends gives me plus 20 mobility. Why wouldn't you? I mean, why wouldn't you? Now, a little thing about this mod, it's something that someone else told me, because I thought as long as you had one arc mod, you could put two of them on and you'd be fine. Two, Not two powerful friends, two charged with light mods. No, if you've got two charged with light mods, you don't need an arc mod. The two charged with light mods, and as you can see here, we've got Lucent Blade. Even if I take off, you know, you see there that the secondary perk is active. If I take off the only arc mod that I have, they're still active because the two arc charged with light mods activate each other. So, just a little thing there. So, as I say, we'll be changing from arc when all when we've got rid of all those pesky uh, cabal legionaries with their arc shotguns. Then we're going to switch to sniper damage resist at the boss. So, we'll go to our arms here, elemental charge. All right. Elemental charge basically means when I pick up a well, an elemental well, I will become charged with light times two. That feeds into Lucent Blade. Right? So because we're going to be using the sword for the first two encounters, while charged with light, dealing damage with the sword gives you bonus damage for five seconds, consuming one stack of charge with light. Now, the last piece of real synergy... Oh, I forgot to mention the two other mods. My apologies. Nightmarish Op Opulence is really for our Glaive. So it increases the effect of the Extrovert Origin trait, which is get health back on kills when there's nightmares there. And Glaive of Dreams, when you kill a Nightmare, you get that little orb, right? That unstable essence, which gives you damage against champions, uh, against nightmares. The This extends the duration of that if you've got a Glaive. And for the first encounter, there's going to be quite a few nightmares and we're going to be using a glaive. So, the other piece of synergy that we're going to add in here is for the first two encounters, we are using the Lament, which is a solar sword. So, if we have Radiant active or, or uh, we're health or Restoration active, getting kills with the sword will extend it. It basically resets the timer. So, you can activate it and then before it runs out, you can just kill someone with a sword and it will reset the timer. I mean, that's perfect synergy. So as I've said, we'll keep the Night Watch on for the whole run. And then we'll be changing this on each. We'll change this to this and then this to this. And then we'll change the Lament to Storm Chaser at the boss. That is the setup, guys. Now on to the run. So, the new duality dungeon, it's very interesting. Uh, the, the aesthetic, the way it looks is really, really cool. So let's speak about the mechanics. There is one real mechanic that continues throughout the dungeon. That is shooting the bells to teleport yourself into the nightmare version of the Mindscape. Now, wherever you shoot the bell from is the location you will go into the Mindscape. That comes into play a lot. Shooting the bell from certain locations is actually part of the mechanic. You have it makes life a whole lot easier, but in some cases, especially the first encounter, you have to do it. So let's speak about the different bells. You've got the bell in this area, which is the mainscape area. You can shoot the bell from anywhere, and it will teleport you into this area, which is the nightmare version of the mainscape. To shoot the bell in the nightmare version of the Mindscape, you need to be in the circle that surrounds the bell. So you can't shoot it from everywhere. You've got to be up at the bell, like so. And that takes you back. Now, this helps you traverse the whole terrain, right? It helps you get past places that you would not think you would be able to get past uh, because it changes the landscape within the sandbox area. The whole area is kind of the same layout, with some, but there will be a couple of little differences and you'll see here, when I get to here, I normally dodge, activate my restoration. Now, you will see when we get up here, there's some scions, there are some snipers. I'll use my throwing knives, which extends, you see there, it put the timer back to 10 seconds. 
because I got a solar kill ability or weapon. So I can keep my my restoration going, and as you can see, I also had healing propped as well. So you make it all the way up to the top here. I'm, I'm not going to include the collectibles in this run, but I will show where the two uh, hidden chests are in this run. So we're going to do a little bit of a skip here. So once we get past past this part and we shoot this nightmare bell, we're going to shoot it again. And this will help us completely miss out some of the jumping puzzle. Now if we shoot this bell from inside the circle, bang, and then it puts us to this section, we're going to turn around, we're going to shoot the bell again to put us back into the nightmare version and then drop down missing all of the jumping puzzle and going straight to that exit. Then basically now we're getting to the first kind of little combat area just before the first boss area. Now, the other thing I will say about this is movement and survivability are key. It's, a, it's very much a movement-based dungeon. Uh, it seems to be the way that Bungie's going with, uh, with, with this year, is having some of the harder content not be based so much on strategy, just movement and, and, and being reactive. You can be a little bit proactive, but it's more about being reactive. You'll see as, as well during the run, and I'm not going to call it out every time I do it. When I'm kind of, when I feel like there's a lot going on around me, I'll normally fall back onto my throwing knives, which will give me healing and, you know, just one hit kill, extend restoration, give me radiance, all the good stuff. So the hunter is really strong. I'm, I'll be interested to see next season how strong it is without classy restoration. To be fair. So this is the first encounter, and this incorporates the mechanics as we were saying. So I've shot the bell to put myself into the Nightmare Realm. I will kill. This is a, a feature. Every time you go into a realm, whether it be the Nightmare Realm or the Normal Realm, you'll need to kill the Bell Keepers to activate the bells to allow you to either get in or out of the Nightmare Realm. So every time you change realm, there are going to be Nightmare, there are going to be Bell Keepers guarding the bells important note which comes into play in a lot of them they will always be on the opposite side of the active bell so when you come into the nightmare realm there'll be one bell that needs to be activated and there'll be another one that doesn't have a bell on it at all where the if you're if you're at the side where the bell is the bell keepers will be at the bell on the other side now in this area there are two bells and you've seen there i'm at one bell which is it, it, you'll see when i turn around here it's it's kind of shaded shaded out in the nightmare shade when i when i plant this standard which i'll explain how i got the standard when i plant the standard, you see now it's active you've got to kill the bell keepers to activate the bell so see there that door is opened because i planted the standard now what happened was when i went into the nightmare realm i had to find these room the room i'm in now <clears throat> these rooms are are open all the doors are closed in the normal realm Right. In the Nightmare Realm, they're all open. Inside two of the rooms will be Scions. And when you kill Scions, you will get a standard. A standard, you have to pick it up. You have to obviously got to pick it up. And it will give you, you'll see when we come out of here, I'm going to go and pick up a, a standard, which was a mechanic that I'm exploiting. But again, because we're going to be doing this a few times, we've got to do this two or three times. You'll get to see it in practice once I've explained it all. There's a lot to explain, really. This is the standard. And when you pick it up, you'll see on the left, it says Standard Essence Axe. Meaning, I have the Axe Standard. Now, these are the same symbols that were active in the Leviathan. Dog, the way we used to call it was Dog. Axes, Cup or Chalice and Sun, right? And there are each, there's two at each side. You can see here... Dog and axe are at the bottom. I'm just checking, make sure I've got my setup right. And as you can see here, I didn't because I didn't have charge with light. Uh, so down at the bottom here is is dog and axe, and up at the top, at the stairs, up at where the bell is, is sun and chalice. So we're going to plant this this essence. I'm just going to clear some ads. I'm going to plant this essence here. And then that door's going to open. As I said, the location you shoot the bell from is the location you will go into the mainscape. Once you've planted an essence, you need to be inside the room to shoot the bell. Because to start DPS, you need to kill two sets of these uh, 
Shades of Galrans. Now there's quite a few of them, so they're not really too difficult to kill. You can see that one shot from my glaive almost kills them. That's where the, the mod Nightmarish Opulence comes in, because that basically uh, gives me health back on kills when everything's about survivability. So we're at DPS. Seems really quickly how we got to DPS. I wanted you to see a working run of it because there's a lot to explain. Uh, there's a lot to explain of what's going on. So it's really difficult with the speed that I went, and especially in the first run, the speed that I was going at. So much going on, it's kind of difficult to explain it all as it's happening. So I'm doing damage to Galram because what we've done is we've planted two standards. We've went in and killed two two lots of the shades of Galran. That's what happens. You plant two standards, do the thing, kill the, the Galrans, and then it will say that he's become vulnerable, and that's damage. Now, we're at 10 seconds now, so we're going to get out. We we killed the Bell Keepers as soon as we came in, so we know the active Bell is the opposite side to where we killed them. So, that was a full run. Now, let's kind of break it down. When we we're going to kill these ads, we're going to kill these bell keepers, right? And then we're going to go in and we're going to find the two scions. Now, what I'm doing is I'm killing both scions, but I'm only picking one standard up, right? So we'll shoot this bell, take it, well, go and get some heavy. You've always got to make sure you've got your ammo sorted. Shoot the bell. We can shoot it from anywhere, but I've came up and done this. Now we're going to find the two scions. Now, forget about what standard you see. There's a standard already there in this first wave. So this is a full wave now. We've just done damage. We're now starting a whole new wave. We've already done one. So now you can attach maybe the information I'm going to give you now to what we've done in the last one. It's going to be doing the same here. So we kill the bell keepers. And once we kill the bell keepers, we know that the active bell, the bell we've got to shoot to get out here, is on the opposite side. So don't pick the standards up. If you see a standard already lying there, it's, this is for the second wave. The first wave, there won't be any. The first time you do this rotation, there won't be any. Go and kill the two scions, and the scion that didn't, there was no standard in the room, and a standard appears, pick that standard up. Do not pick both of them up. Just pick one, right? So the first time you came in, there would have been, the first rotation, there'd have been no standard on the, you know, you'd have been two scions. You'll shoot both scions, pick one of the standards up but you've got to kill both the scions and it says the nightmare is retreating right once you've killed the, the two the two scions you've picked one standard up which as you can see we've got sun we're going to plant that once we plant that this door in front of sun is going to open we are going to go in kill enemies if you've got to but then we shoot the bell we've activated the bell by killing the bell keepers and then we'll shoot the bell from inside. That transports us into the Nightmare version of the Mindscape. Now we've got to kill these uh, uh, Shades of Galran. So what I'm doing is I throw a throwing knife to become Radiant. And then I dodge to get my, my healing. And then we go after the, the, the Shades of Galran. And then you can see when you've cleared them, the Nightmare withdraws. And then we'll make it out. We'll kill the two Bell Keepers. Now this this is still the first way. This is, the se this is still like... Kind of the, the end of the first wave. Now, we go and find the room that has a Scion in it and that has uh, a standard just sitting waiting for us. We leave the Scion and we kill, we, we take the standard. There's a reason for doing that. If you're in with a fire team and you're doing this with a fire team, you would both just pick up the standards and get out. But because we're doing it solo, the reason why we're doing it like that, we're, we're killing both Scions in the first wave. And I'm only picking one standard up. When we come back in, we'll find the room that has a standard and a scion. And just take the, the, the standard and leave the scion. As when we get teleported this time, that scion's going to be in the room. You get 15 seconds of additional time by killing the scion as well. So that's 15 extra seconds for DPS. There's the scion in the nightmare room. And, and as you can see now, we've got... We get, t we get additional time when we kill the Nightmares, right? We've got 15 se extra seconds for killing for killing that Scion, which, as I say, that's that means the whole amount of time, we've got a minute now, the whole amount of time that we had uh, to deal damage, 
we'd have took about 10 seconds of that off just to get to the bell after DPS. So we're at DPS because we've planted two standards. Throw my throwing knife, I've got my, my, my healing. Now let's speak about damage. So I'll just get a kill with my sword and refresh all my, my timers. Now, what I'm saying here is up to you, right? What I do is I do two charged attacks, light attacks, a heavy attack, and then two normal light attacks. What that allows me to do is to keep charging the same attacks. So I don't have to wait for my charge to get the big heavy attacks. Now, we ha we did have Radiance. If you've got time, you can refresh your Radiant, right? So what I do is I throw my Thorn Knives for DPS, throw my Thorn Knives, dodge to get my health. I've got Radiance, I've got Restoration, and then I charge my sword, do two light attacks, one heavy attack, let go of the charge, two light attacks. And then I just keep doing that, all right? So this is the start of a full wave, so let's, let's put it all together. This is the very start of the next wave. We're going to kill the two. This is the last wave. We will kill them here. Kill the bell keepers. Go in, into the into the nightmare realm. We're going to look for the two scions. We're going to kill both scions, but we are only going to pick up one of the standards on this run. All right. So this is the same run that you would start this whole encounter on. You, so we reset. We've done DPS. You'll always go back to this after DPS. So we're going to check the rooms. The radar will tell you if you, if you, if you get a, if you get a, 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 a red on your radar, you'll know that there's stuff in that room. So we kill one. We're going to kill these again. You always got to kill the bell keepers. Uh, we can see that scion. We, all we've got to do is kill the scion. The nightmare withdraws. We kill both scions. We only picked one standard up. We'll go back to the bell. We'll kill the bell keepers out in the other area. We'll plant the standard. The door will open. We'll go into the room. We'll kill kill the the shades of Galran. Then we'll find the other standard. We'll find that the standard that's there. That, but the room needs to have a scion in it. There might be two standards just sitting waiting because we've done this a few times. You always need to find the room that has the scion in it. Because, as I've said, the reason why you're not killing that scion is you want to leave him so that... When it comes time for DPS, you've got an extra 15 seconds by killing him. Now, <clears throat> the whole the way this whole, that this works is, I think the game basically, if you kill both scions but don't pick up the standards, it just respawns a scion because every time you come in, you'll get new scions. So, again, there's no bell. You can see there. That's a perfect representation of the bellkeeper mechanic. Bellkeepers were there, but there was no bell inside there inside the 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 kind of holder so I'm, i've i found the room with with the scion uh, and and the standard left the scion picked the standard up go to the opposite side to the bell to find the bell shoot to get out you see everything's time gated when you're in the nightmare realm and then we're gonna again go and kill the bell keepers because as you can see there the bell isn't active There's the bell keepers. Now, when you're in this realm, you'll get bell keepers on both sides. So it's not you don't have to go to the opposite side here. It's more so in the in the, the nightmare realm. Dodge, get my wellness. Now another thing you've got to watch out is those big dudes, the big cabal dudes, when they hit you, if they hit you with their blinding rockets and stuff, uh, that can take your wellness away. So if you do get blinded, just out of reflex, dodge again. Don't take the chance of thinking, because sometimes it doesn't take your wellness and healing off you. Sometimes those blinding rockets will. So we know that the Scion's here. There he is. And you'll see there, that gives us 15 seconds. Now we'll kill these Bell Keepers. I'll throw a fusion. And then we're going to go after the boss. So again, you'll see I do it every time. I will dodge. I will throw Throne Knives. And then I'll throw my Super. And now, what we, the reason I never went after him is we want him up here. You do not want to really be attacking Galran when he's on the slope because you, you can't really get your attacks properly. And I just keep going after it and add every time just to keep my my uh, my radiance repropped. You see there? Just 
and 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 if by 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 about I don't know about fifty percent through the the damage, uh, you you're going to end up in a scenario where it's just you and the boss because you'll have killed all the other rats, and that's the first encounter. It's it's actually really really simple. Uh, just make sure you keep procking your radiance and your wellness, and make sure you leave that scion in the first half of the rotation. Okay. Now we head on to the second kind of skip. Uh, I, I came the wrong way here. Uh, when you drop down here, <clears throat> you'll want to go to the side that has the light. So you see, I'm looking, I'm like, why, why is there no exits here? I didn't actually do this dungeon a lot before I got this uh, solo. I never came in until, I think, the Sunday. And that was a week, not the Sunday right after it dropped, a week and two days after the dungeon dropped. That's when I attempted the solo. So when you drop down here, you want to go in the side that has the bright light, not the red light. And that takes you here. Now, the skip we're going to do is we're going to miss out quite a bit of this jumping. If you're going for the if you're going for the collectible, you can still get it doing this, this skip. I just go around here to the right, and you can land on this little bit here, and then just jump up, and here you are, right at the lever. Uh... And if you're going for the collectible, when you go on these platforms here, instead of going to the right to get to the exit, you'll see on the left there's some there's some some of the tombs are poking out. Just go all the way to the left and jump round at the end, jump round the pillar onto the, the, the next tomb that's sticking out in the collectibles there. When you slide down this slide, you will die if you don't jump. So you can just do a little jump, hit your head off the ceiling, and you'll be fine. And now we're just a straight run. There is a a pretty big jump coming up here. Uh, I don't bother fighting many of these ads. I just keep going. I just keep running. And then when we get up here, we're going to get to... Uh, it's not... Well, there's a big jump to come, but that, it is kind of an encounter, but it's not really an encounter. It's just a little... A little kind of half mechanic thing you've got to do. So on the Hunter, I don't take any chances. I've not got Stompies on. I just do a big jump. I hold my jump button when I'm doing the jump to get the maximum out of my jump. Because if you hold your jump button, you jump further. Use a, a sword swipe to get the distance and then two jumps. In this room is the first of the secret chests. It is up in there. So you jump up there and there's a chest up in there. Now the, the mechanic for this is there are four statues. One of them will be pointing towards the bell. The other three won't be. The idea is... They turn anti-clockwise 90 degrees. So it will always be 3-2-2. Three, two, two. Three, three of these turns. And then... Two. So if, if they're... For example, if the sword is pointing the opposite way to the bell, that's two turns to get it to come back. Because it turns 90 degrees each turn. If the sword is facing to the right as you're looking at it, that's three turns because it goes anti-clockwise. So it will always be 3 two, 2 Make sure you're pointing to the first one you've got to activate because when you come into the Nightmare Realm, they'll all be facing front. You won't see what way that they're facing out in the real world. You can't really wipe here. If you forget the, the rotation of which way they're facing, just go back up to the bell, shoot it, go back into the normal realm, and then have another look. Uh, so... That, that's this this kind of part. Now we are at the second main encounter. I'm going to change to my Wayfaring Grenade Launcher, but this is the second main encounter. This is the Vault. So the Vault encounter is the dungeon's second main encounter, and all the mechanics you learned in Galran are all in play here, with one slight modification to them. So we have to kill the bell keepers to make the bells active. You will find them underneath the bells, as you can see here. Uh, standards will appear, symbols will, symbols will appear. You have to go and collect the standards by killing the standard bearers and then plant them to start DPS. The difference here is you have to go to specific places to do it and these places are bigger than they are in this realm. The nightmare realm is bigger than this realm. So. What you have here is you see we've got the, the symbols have appeared. I've got sun and cup. Now the way this works is, as you'll see here when I go around here, the symbols that you need have place markings in all four corners. So sun, sun and axes are, well, if you look at the high bell, and that's the way I look at it, this is what, what we're running to now is high bell. It's the top of the stairs. 
dog is to the left, the high bill, axis is to the right. And when you're looking at low bill, which is the bill opposite high bill, obviously, uh, cup is left and sun is right. What you have to do is, once you've killed the bell keepers, you have to find out what what uh, symbols have appeared. You see there, cups appeared, and I'm at cup. You shoot the bell, it will put you into the nightmare realm, and now you have this area that's full of ads. To get the standard, you have to kill most, if not all, of the ads in here. Now, I say most, if not all, because I've had times it's came, and I've still had one ad still alive. Uh... So that, as you'll have seen there, I think there's like four phalanxes all in, four phalanxes and four uh, legionaries. Then you've got a colossus at the end. Once you kill the colossus and you've killed enough of the red bar ads, you will get the standard bearer. Kill the standard bearer, you'll be able to acquire the essence of the standard and then you make it out. What you've got to do before you make it out you've got to kill the, the bell keepers now as you can see i can see over on the right at the top of the stairs there was no bell up on the right hand side as you can see on uh, top of the stairs meaning this is the side the bell keepers are on because they're always on the opposite side of the active bell now you see there you the problem with this is always going to be the time when you come into the nightmare section of it you're time gated so you have a limited amount of time to complete the objectives. Out here, in the, in the normal mindscape, you're fine. Once you go into the Nightmare Realm, much the same as all of the all, all of the encounters, you are time-gated. And to extend uh, the time, you have to kill standard bearers. Now, as we go forward, starting, starting here, really, if you kill the wrong standard bearer, you will lose time. Killing the wrong standard bearer will 90% of the time result in a wipe. Going for the solo flawless? That is not ideal. So, make sure you're at the right place before you shoot the bell to go in. Double check, triple check if you have to. So you can see here there's three guys at the start. Two legionaries, one phalanx. There we've got another couple of phalanxes. So that would be four phalanxes, and which, if my estimations are right, that should leave two legionaries. Now, I've, I've left the legionary up. I'll just kill this colossus. And there we go. So, you can leave one add up. So you have to kill seven and leave one up. And then we're going to pick the standard up, and then we're going to get out. After we've killed the bell keepers. So again... When we come down here, we're going to have a look and see where the active bell is. So, the active bell is not on low side. So, the bell keepers must be here. And there we go, two bell keepers. Now, you can see the difference in the time. This time, I have uh, 50, I had 20 seconds after I killed the bell keepers. It all depends on how fast you clear your side. And there we go. And now we're out. We're going to plant this bell. Now, this nightmare boss is now going to become a boss boss. We can actually kill him. So what I'm going to do, throw my knives, dodge near him to get the knives back, then pop the super, and then we're going to use the same rotation on the sword that we did before. Except this time you can see, what I'm trying to do is keep my radiance up by killing an ad with the sword, because of the, the what we've got on. Killing an ad will extend my radiance. Now, I'm not getting, I'm not extending my healing, because my healing's already ran out. Oh no, I am restoring my restoration. Uh, the reason why I'm not too bored about doing that is, well, obviously I am, but the charge shots from the Lament give you back health. So sometimes it's, uh, it's, it's a little hard to notice. Now you see there, that can happen. What just happened there can happen. My suggestion, if at all possible, always dodge before you go after our bell keeper. So we've got one next to, which is, uh, I never seen what the axe and dog. So axe is his right hand side of high bell, and dog, uh, what's it, axes and, axes and dog? Well, they're left and right of high vault, high, 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 uh, high, high bell. So the bell at the stairs, left and right, is. That that's that is dog and axis. So we're gonna go over there. Just what I you'll see me sometimes 
like clearing ads because uh, I'll need ammo because obviously I'm using my sword to take out just about all the heavy ads so dog just check we've got axes we know we've got dog and axes always make sure you you, you check and make sure you're on the right side and as you can see, if you're over on that side before, before you shoot the bell, it, it just makes it fun. it's just easier. You're just there. So, and this is why you use a wave frame. This is why I use a wave frame. How quickly I managed to clear all those ads. Now, the reason why I'm doing this with the grenade and the throwing knives and all that is I was trying to conserve some sword ammo. Because I, want, I don't want to kind of be messing about when the boss comes. Uh, trying to farm sword ammo, so you do three rotations. This is, I think, I think this is our third. We still got one, one to come in and get. Just check where the active bell is. The active bell is high bell, so the the bell keepers will be under underneath here. And we'll just take them out. Hopefully, he jumps down. There we go, and now we can get out, and I picked up some sword ammo. And then up to high bell. You can just do a single kind of hit with the sword to, to get out of here. It does enough damage to activate it. And then we'll go and plant axe, and then <clears throat> we'll go over to sun. <clears throat> now, if this happens, and it will happen, one time you'll come in and the boss will be like, Yep, yeah, I'm here, uh, and I'm going to stay here. So there's dog, just making sure dog is the next one. Yep. But there's a lot of ads here. Can I get some uh, can I get some heavy as well? And <clears throat> what th what happened there will happen as well sometimes. Uh, sometimes you'll go to shoot your bell and you won't be able to access it because of your location. If that's the case, come out, shoot it from out in the open, and, and make sure that you're close to where you need to go to to for your area and then as soon as you've shot it as soon as you've seen you've activated it you see there I haven't killed enough ads and there we go no that's what I'm saying sometimes it's kind of weird weird like that so we'll kill we'll kill him now pick up the standard and then get out of dodge yeah so you, sometimes you want to make sure that uh you, you know, you've got, if, if, if you can't access your bell, make sure that you can see your bell. Uh, and as soon as you've shot it and it's activated, then as soon as you see it closing up, turn and start moving towards the, the corner that you need to be in. And then when you get into the mainscape, you'll always go into the mainscape, the nightmare section of the mainscape. You'll always go into the mainscape in the location that you shot from. So now the bosses will do the same thing. The boss is active. We dodged. We threw a, a throw knife at him, and what the throw knife done was, uh, it. Uh, let me just kill these two because I fell down here, and the boss is here now. The, this last boss, I always have an issue with him, and the not an issue, but he just runs away. He doesn't. He doesn't seem to get staggered too much, and. So much for uh, Bungie saying that the the lament tracking was fixed. I don't know how many times I go straight through the enemies, and there that's that is the that is the vault done. So the idea of this, the the the, the last kind of tip I would give you about this, and it's this is not really a tip about it's not really a tip about the the vault encounter. This goes for every single part of the of the the dungeon uh it's a it, movement and survivability a key you can see there this is our last boss i actually i don't know why i was in my head i thought we'd done two huh. well anyway still got one more to do so it's not it yet calm down <laughs> not that fast uh there there is a survivability thing it's I said this at the start, and I maintain it, I think. One of the big issues with that I've got sometimes with this sort of content is I'm not really a big fan of running about all the time. Sometimes I want to strategize, but hey, it's cool to do new things, right? So 
what we're going to do here is find out. So we've got cup. Can't, I, I missed what the other one was. So cup is left hand side of small. And obviously it was axis, which is right hand side of high bell or bell at the stairs. Whichever one you want to call it. I call it high bell. Again, it's just about keeping momentum, I suppose. Because it is a movement based dungeon, there is a lot of movement to be done here. Uh, a lot getting through areas quickly. If you're doing this, <clears throat> obviously if you're looking at this, you're, you're, you're wanting to know how to do it solo. Really, you just... The weapon the weapon selection is built off the fact... Because you can kind of mess about with these weapons. The weapon selections are are based on what's going to kill the... the if, you, if, if you want to call it, the high value targets quickly. So now I'm looking, right, so... Uh, the active bells at the top of the stairs. This is low bell. I'll hit them with a grenade launcher, which means they'll just need one shot. I can't have got him with a grenade. Uh, you want you want weapons, at least one weapon for bot, for DPS on a boss, and then the other weapon is how do I kill the high value targets? The you know, in this case, the bell keepers. What's the fastest way to kill them? And because the bosses don't require these these little guys. Because they don't require uh, tons of DPS to kill them, I can run sword. So now the bell keepers can be taken with the sword. So n obviously the point, and it is, if you like the high value target, if you like in this dungeon, in this uh, section, is clearing the ads in the areas because you're time gated. That is the, you know, what, what, although they're all raid bar. And it's, you can't really say this is a high value target. That is the priority, is to get through those quickly. Now, I don't have enough heavy to do boss DPS afterwards. So I would like a little bit more heavy, but it is what it is. I've got enough to, to, to kill the first guy, so we have got cup. We'll shoot the we'll shoot the bell. That puts us in on cup side because we don't need a lot of heavy to kill these guys. Now, as you'll have seen there, a wave frame grenade launcher, if you fire it at the stairs, it will not do anything. If you fire it so it goes up the stairs, it will actually go up the stairs. And we got heavy. So we'll kill this guy, we're good, doing good for time. I'm trying not to uh, use too much heavy on these guys, hoping to get some. And then we go, stand the bearers down. Again, I'm firing that waveframe down the stairs to see if they drop any heavy. And then we're out of here. Actually, there was a brick of heavy in, in the main room that I missed. Let's find the... The active bell is low bell. It's behind us. And as you can see, there, the bell holder at the top of the stairs has no bell in it. So, again, I'll just keep reiterating that. That is where the bell keepers will be. Both bell keepers are down. Sometimes the, the grenade launcher will do that. It'll just one hit. You know, and I don't know if it causes the jetpacks or the backpacks to explode, and that's what gives you your secondary explosion and, and ultimate kill. So, one more to go, and then that will be DPS. No, no, oh, of course it's not. I don't, know what's, I don't know what's wrong with me today. It's like I can't see what's happening in front of my face. So, this is the last boss. <laughs> this is the last boss, evidently. Now, I don't have a lot of heavy, so, and the Lament obviously has uh, issues. And you can see, you know, we're going to struggle here with, with DPS unless I get uh, some heavy from killing the smaller ads. Again, it's, it's as long as you can survive, you can see the Hunter has no problems surviving. For me, if you take all the classes, I think Solar Hunter has been the revelation. Uh, I'm very impressed with with the Solar Hunter's survivability and also uh, crazy DPS. There we go, now we've got a little bit of heavy. How much heavy is that? Oh, look at that. This, bo this boy's in trouble now, so we'll dodge, get what what our thing, our health, and then we'll go after him. And the lament, 
has no idea what it's doing most of the time. The thing is just a madman. It's like the Laments attacks is like what I imagine a shark to be when they go into that shark frenzy. It's just like anything around it will go after. And there we go, that is actually the Volk. So mobility is a key thing. Survivability, which is more than just, it has to be more than just resilience and mods. The faster you are, the harder you are to kill, and then couple that with the double dodge and the, the recovery mod on the class ability, and you can bolster that with solar kills and throwing knife kills and what have you. That is probably the... Seems really strange to say this, but for me, the encounters get easier as they go. The first one, a Galram, yeah, it's a little bit... It's not difficult, it's just time-consuming and a little bit annoying. The Vault... Less time consuming, less annoying, and the boss, uh, pretty easy. So we've got a collectible under here, and this is where your second uh, hidden chest is. Now we're going to make it through to the boss. I will point out uh, in areas where the, where collectibles are, but I'm, as I say, I'm not going to be shown where the collectibles are. Uh, that is not what this run is about. And at this point, I think everybody... I think there's about 42,000 uh, memory guides out there. So just make it up here. Uh, the jumping sections. I always enjoy a little jumping section, if I'm being honest. You know, uh, if you've got high mobility on any of your characters, you, as long as you can control your jump, you should be fine. There is a bit coming up that always, always makes me laugh. Right, And when we get there, I'll tell you. And it makes me laugh because... I probably, I've done this this run on Wednesday, but I just have been struggling to get the editing because I've been helping people and I've had family staying and stuff. I help, I, I do runs with a lot of people. So that's what sometimes hampers the, the videos coming out. And this part that's coming up, I have got quite a few clips of, of from this, this part coming up. Not quite here. There is a collectible in this section. When you get into the Nightmare Realm, uh, it's it's off to the side. Oh no no, was it? Where, it was where we just were in the nightmare realm. Uh, when when you go in, you've got a bit that uh, a, a platform that you run forward. And if you look to the right, it's just like a little beam like these. If you look to the right, you can see a staircase just off to the right. The collectibles on that staircase. Was it that other bit? I think it was. So I normally just, I run past a lot of enemies, but if there's incendiars on platforms, I tend to kill them because they can they can just boop you off the platform. This part here makes me laugh because the amount of people that just jump over here and like, you know, what's happening? And just come out here like a bat out of hell and just face plant against that wall and it's just over. So I have got a few clips of people doing that. This is us heading to the boss now. The last collectible is here. When we get up here and then you jump onto this big platform here and then you go across and you can see the entrance to the light on the left the so with the red light if you look above the entrance you'll see a little little opening a little square opening that's where the last collectible is so this is us at the boss final stage for the solo flawless so now you've made it to the, the final encounter, I'm just going to spend a little bit of time just at the start here changing the mods to the new setup, which is Linear Fusion Rifle Finders and Scavengers, and you know I'm not going to need uh, I'm not going to need Lucent Blade or any of that stuff. So I'm just going to be changing up some mods here, which gives me a chance to explain the first encounter, the the boss encounter. The way the boss works is it's everything you've learned up till now put into an encounter. So there's bell keepers, there's bells. There are symbols, there are uh, standard bearers, go into the Nightmare Realm, it's time-gated, yada yada. Except now you've got three bells, that's the first difference. You've got a mid-bell, left-bell, and a right-bell, right? The bell keepers in any encounter only come out once you've used all three, all, all of the active bells. So you've got three runs of, of getting into the, the Nightmare Mindscape before the bell keepers come back out. So, kill the bell keepers to make the outside bells active. Every time you go into the mainscape, you're gonna have two bells. You have to kill all the bell keepers to, to get your active bell when you go into the mainscape. So the way this, this kind of whole encounter works is, 
when you start it, you'll get your bell keepers. There are going to be four balconies. So at the front, at the furthest end of the map, you see I use that big bell in the center as my, my kind of, that's where I center myself. The furthest away, you see, you can see there, they've all got symbols above them. The furthest away, left the sun axis is on the right. And at the back, closest to where we are actually right now, it will be dog on the left, cup on the right, as you're looking at the big bell, right? So you see here, I'm using now the, gla glacial, ca the, the, the glacial chasm. Uh, I don't, I, I, yeah, the glacial chasm. I, I get I got mixed up there. I was thinking the cataclysmic. Uh, you see that you can see there those those balconies. Those those little snipers are on them. But because we've killed all the bell keepers, the symbols have now appeared to the right and left of the center bell. So you'll see there we've got axes, which is front right, which is where we're looking at now, and we've got cup, which is back left. Now you have to remember the locations. Because when you go into the Mindscape, they won't have the locations marked. You need to know where you're going before you go. So just keep double check, make sure you know where you're going. So we know we're going front, right, back, left. Once you teleport in, you will miss your first throw. Now, when you kill these, these uh, Scions, they will be where you get your standards from. And every time you kill one, you see we've got 30 odd seconds. I'll dodge, get my throwing knives back here so I can keep, uh, get my, my dodge back faster. Uh, I'm going to go and kill this guy. Now I've got my two standards. I've still got some bell keepers to kill. Every time I kill a standard keeper, I get the 15 seconds. So you can see, just throwing throwing knives just to extend. Grab that special, because special is a... a for me, anyway, I, I found special to be at a, a premium. And then get inside the circle, shoot the bell, and then go and plant your standards. Once you've planted these standards, you will get another two. You will rinse and repeat, and then it will say, I, I can't remember the exact text, but it's like, you know, a big bell's, <laughs> a big bell's ready to be rung. The difference between the big bell is which is the bell I was speaking about at the start, it's at the front. That big bell just to our left. The difference with that is, you'll see those chains, there's four sets of chains. Uh, you've got to shoot one of the locks off the chains, and that sends Kaito, who's kind of hovering about, that sends Kaito into, into this realm here, right? We then have to get in here as well. Now, this is where it, this is where it changes, right? It's the same mechanics but different. If that even made any sense, we have to we have to shoot the bells, right? Got to kill the bell keepers to make the bells active. We have to shoot the bells, but the the reason why it's different is she has to be in the vicinity of the bell to get stunned by the bell ringing, then she's available to do DPS. So as you can see here, we've got. Well, last set of standards. We're going to plant them. Now, once I've planted them, I'll even get to have a look and see what... Because there is an audio cue. You'll hear like a, a big a gong, right? And that will that will tell you that uh, it's time for DPS, right? So we'll plant this last sigil. The Bell of Conquest is prime. That's what it says. But you'll hear a big bell ringing. What we're going to do now is we're going to start in the mid, just making sure I've got enough ammo. We're going to start in the mid and we're going to shoot, the, these are the locks you shoot. Once you've shot the locks, then we're going to shoot a bell to get in, right? And then we never actually shot it because everything was going on. I kill the mid bell keepers first and then wherever she goes, you have to shoot the bell keepers before she gets there. See, there she is. Now, what I done is I shot the bell keepers, then I shot the bell, and I based it off where she was, like how close the the red was to my, on my map. But the other thing that you can do, and you'll see me do it, especially here. See, I'm, I'm just waiting to see if she's going to turn. Yes, she's going to turn. 
I'll shoot this bell. She was close enough that the bell activated her or stunned her. Now she's taking the recommended amount of damage that she's supposed to take here, right? And now I know there's only one bell left. I'll stay in the middle because she will, she will try and stomp you. If she gets close to you, she's going to try and stomp you, right? You want her to stomp you. As you can understand, it's tight for time to get round all the bells to do DPS, right? If you can get in front of her, she will try and stomp you. She doesn't really have a big, uh, a big radius. Her stomp isn't like massive, so it just slows her down, right? So I think the next run will really show exactly what I'm meaning. Uh, because what I normally do is I shoot the bell to get in. So when you shoot the lock on on the on the chains, what that does is it sends her into the mainscape, right? If, if you wait, it will put you into the mainscape anyway, right? But if you shoot the bell to send yourself into the mainscape, you get a couple of seconds before she gets in, and in that couple of seconds, you can kill some of the bell keepers. Normally, I normally kill the mid ones. I get the mid ones out of the way. If I can, I get a grenade on one of the other ones, but... I get the mid. I start in the mid. Always start in the mid. And the reason I start in the mid is because uh, I'm in the I, I'm in the the easiest place to get to all the places that she's gonna go. So I'll see her move left, right, or forward. If she moves right, I've got to kill the right hand bell keepers before she gets there. And the best way to do that is to get in front of her and stop her from getting to the bell so quickly. Get her to try and stomp me, right? And the, as I say, if you're in the center of where everything's going on, you're you're at the closest point to each bell. So you're not further away from one than you are from another. That's why I always start in the mid. So we're just looking here to see if there's any bell keepers still left. Because the symbols won't appear until the bell keepers are dead. Right? So if the symbols haven't appeared, one bell keeper is, is hiding. But as you can see here, they're not hiding. So... I'm just looking up for ammo. I'm pretty low on special. I cannot go in until I get special because I need, you know, my glacial chasm one hits the one hits the bell keepers. I really need that. Because we're time gated. Well, there's more special. Oh, nice. Four rounds. Well done. Uh that that was a sarcastic well done, by the way. I'll just dodge. If I if I need my if I need the reason I keep throwing these just just in case you never watched the setup at the start and wonder why I'm just running about trying to get throwing knife kills, it's because throwing knife kills will recharge my class ability and it will give me a healing well all in the one go. You know, and if I've got radiance, which I do get, you see there, I am radiant because uh, because I throw throwing throw knives because uh, it's another mod I've got on another uh, another fragment. That when I throw, which is why when you see me doing damage at the boss, I throw throwing knives at her first. You know? Because I want that radiance. 25% extra damage, why wouldn't you? So I'm just, I'm really being greedy here. I've got enough to go in and do this. Uh, I just want as much special line about as possible. So, you know, with the mods that I had on, I couldn't put. I've just seen special there in the middle. I wonder if I noticed that in game. Yes, I did. Well, I noticed it because I've seen it again. <laughs> I didn't notice it when I... I never noticed it in game when I noticed it now. So, I've got enough. More special on the floor. Brilliant. Now I'm ready to go. Uh, so, we have Sun. They're both on this side. Sun and Cup. Sun and Cup is uh, front left and back right. So, there's front left and back right is right where we're standing. So, now I will shoot the bell. As soon as it does that, I'm going to dodge... Now I've got my my healing. I'll throw I'll throw a throw knife. That extends the healing. Now I'm radiant, and I've got a little bit of time, so uh, I will I will take out the bell keepers here. Now you might have noticed as soon as and I've said this already in the run. As soon as I got hit with the the blinding rockets, I dodged again. I'm not taking the chance that I've lost my restoration. That's all the bell keepers down. Uh, now it's now it's rinse and repeat. We're going to go and plant these standards. 
Uh, we've still got bells active, so as soon as we plant the standards, we'll get the next two standards. And then we'll go in and get those exactly the same way. Something I haven't spoke about yet, because it's not relevant to the run, really. Uh, is how I'm able to throw throwing knives on, 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 you know, I am using a controller. How I'm able to throw the throwing knives even when the enemies are in front of me. If you go to your settings and you go, to, you'll see controller, you've got button button layout custom. Or you won't, I think you might have default. If you go in there, you can change what your primary melee button does. And I've got it that my primary melee and my charged melee are both single push on the, on, you know. So if I've got my charged melee, it will take that away from me first. So even if the ads are in front of me, I won't melee. I'll do my charged melee. And that's, I've done it because uh, to start with, I was going to be as cheap and as cheerful as, as all the titans, all the, the hammers. And then I figured, you know what? It's a little bit too strong. They're probably going to nerf it. And guess what? They nerfed it. So it works really well with all the charged melees. You'll use your charged melee over your default melee if you have a charged melee, regardless of how close to you the enemies are. So that's the last set of standards before the next phase of DPS. Now, we've used all of our active... Uh, We've used all of our active bells, so we have a whole bunch of bell keepers. So we're going to have to take them out before we can do anything. Now, as you've seen there, if you can line them up with the glacial chasm, you will get a double kill. I'll just move away. I think I did get shots on them, so I'll just finish them with a the scout. Again, if you never watched the start, and people are probably wondering, why is he using Nightwatch? Does really good damage. It's like five shots to break to break a bell. Uh, five shots to break a bell, and it gives me to plus ten mobility. So there's nothing not to like. So we'll take out the two center bell keepers, and now we know Kite was going right. So what I'm going to do, you'll see there, I'm kind of staying in between her and the bell, so that she she tries to melee me, and that gives me enough time to do everything else I need to do without worrying about how much damage I'm doing. So we've took one side out. I'll dodge, get my health. We've took one side out. Now we need to find out where she's going. She's coming to mid. Yep, she's coming to mid. So I'll go. You see, I got her, to, I got her to, to try and melee me. And every time I'll throw knives at her, then I'll dodge. And you'll see, it doesn't matter how many times the snipers hit me. They do not have a chance to kill me. We know definitely where she's going now, so we'll take the bell keepers out. And we'll try and stay as close to mid as possible so she tries to slam. And then we stop her. Just because she come up and we got her to slam, she couldn't... If she comes up and you haven't activated the bell, and you haven't done all of this, it's not a wipe. She will just go back into the, the normal scape. She will go back into the normal scape, and you'll have to do a whole rotation again. To get back to this it's not a wipe it's just efficiency you know you want to be as efficient as possible if you're doing a solo flawless a lot of people will think like this you're you're gonna want as little rotations as possible because it's less times to mess up so a bit special thank you sir so now we're on the th this is going to be the last kind of phase so we want we want to get some special, we want to get some heavy. And I should have heavy lying about because I haven't, you know, with all the all the enemies that I was killing, we'll take out these bell keepers because it, it, it's really hectic in this room, which is why I've spoke with people quite a bit over the past week. Man, when can you, when, when you can, can you remember a time? And I can actually remember a time, but I'm asking you, when you can, when can you remember a time? where the, the Hunter uh, was the most dominant PvP class, a PvE. <laughs> when can you remember when the Hunter was the most dominant PvP class? Uh, yesterday. <laughs> uh, when, can you when can you think of a time when the, the Hunter was the most dominant PvE class when not on uh, Invis? 
And the last time I can remember Hunter being dominant in PvE was year one Archstrider. When the when the when Raiden Flux was really strong, because that thing could clear man. You you would start on one strike and still have that super going in the next strike. Whereas, you know, I, I can't remember the time where it was so dominant, but Warlock. Mm, I'm not happy with what they've done to Warlock. Again, I keep wanting to go off on that. I'm not I'm just gonna stick with this. I'm not gonna say anything. <laughs> I don't want to upset all the Warlocks. Uh so we know what we've got. Last phase, again, and you should, again, just another thing that I'll say about when you're doing this is always try when you come off the come off these balconies, don't think ah, I'll just go straight for the bell keepers like I could have there. Come back into the mid first because if they boop you before you land and you're not planted, you're off the map. Make sure there's enough space between you know. If you do get booped, you're not going to feel it because you, you'll have your restoration going. But you, you just want to make sure you're on terra firma. Like, you know, you want to make sure that your feet are firmly planted. Because if they're not, you're taking an unscheduled trip. And it's not good for anyone. Especially if you've done all this good work to get here. We've got plenty of heavy. Plenty of spe plenty of heavy. Plenty of special. You see all the damage I'm taking and I'm just like, yeah, whatever. You know, it, the th Void th Solar 3.0, well, we're only really going to work out how good it is after this season. Because after this season, that's when we find out how, you know, how strong these subclasses are when, when we don't have classic restoration. We'll have something else, no doubt, but I think that's what really is making these subclasses so strong. And again, as you can see, I've just thrown a throwing knife and I've got 60-70% of my class ability straight back. You know, it's really, really strong with the, with those fragments and aspects. So now we know what we've got. We'll get a dodge, get with health, and then we'll extend it with the thrown knives again. And we'll get with healing. So I've got Radiance and I've got healing. So while I've got Radiance active, just take them out. I got hit with the slowing rockets. So I dodged immediately. Do not wait. So, uh... I don't have my throwing knives. I can get them by obviously dodging next to an enemy. I want to make sure that I've got some dodges before I use them. And now we'll just take out this last guy, and that makes the the bell keepers are the bells are active. So we'll go here. As I say, three bells. So you just have to make sure that you're not just oh I'm just going to go to the right and left. Make sure you know. You, you can see as soon as you go in, the bell will be there, it just won't be active. So you'll know where you need to go. And if you set your character up correctly, you you know, and you, you, you keep an eye on your timers, then you should be good. So we'll plant in here, and then it should be DPS. There we go, Bell of Conquest is primed. And we'll get, just try and get some class ability back here. And I'll shoot the lock. There's the lock gone. And I'll shoot the bell. Get us in a little bit faster. And now I'll take out the mid bell keepers. And then look for Kite straight away. And she is. And she's going to our right. And I'll just stay here so she gets tries to get the slam. See that? And it just stops her a little bit. Throw a knife. Super. I've got wellness. I'll dodge again if I need. You can see how much damage we're doing. One hit and she's dead. So now we, we'll get a dodge, get my throwing knife back. And she's going straight over. So I can just stay at the front here and she'll just constantly try and slam me. And now I can see she's close enough from the radar. And then one hit. And there you go, guys. So, the, the real trick of this is to stay in front of her. Right? Try and get her to slam you pretty often. Because if she slams you pretty often, or tries to, that gives you more time to clear the bell keepers, get any possession. You can stop her progression. Make sure you keep your classy restoration up. And, uh, yeah, you should be good here, especially on the hunter. 
Thanks a lot for watching, guys. I always appreciate any support I get on these videos. Uh, keep an eye out because the next video is going to be my solo 100k master. And it's pretty good. Sub 20 minutes. Not bad. Uh, thanks a lot for watching. Again, I'll try and get a Titan and Warlock run done in due course on this. Hope you enjoyed the run. Good luck with your solos. And I will see you guys in the next video. Perhaps we can prevent the second collapse.